Okay, Excellent. so that's great. Uh, so without further ado, Nicholas, um, if you can kickstart your session and we're looking forward to your session. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone, and thank you uh, for being here today and for spending your Saturday with, with us. Uh, as already mentioned, the, the session right now is about the real omni-channel experience, not only for the customer, but also for the agent. Uh, a quick intro introduction of myself. Um, my name is Nicola Fernandez, Nico Fernandez in, in short. Uh, I am Microsoft MVP for business application. I am also uh, pre-sales director at Infaban. Uh, and this session is it, it, it's about, of course, the Omnichannel Engagement Hub. And the idea is to make a quick introduction on the Customer Service App and the Omnichannel Engagement Hub. Then uh, we are going to jump uh, into the idea that this is an Omnichannel platform for everyone. And we will compare it with previous versions of Dynamics or other platforms that you might uh, know. And at the end, we wanted to see a quick uh, introduction on, on, on the practice, on step by step, on how to work with the Omni Channel Engagement Hub. Um, so, just to be clear, uh, my main objective here is uh, to help uh, everyone or, or, or to um, share my, my, my thoughts about uh, the business values on the Omni Channel Engagement Hub. This is not going to be a fully technical uh, session. Uh, the idea also is to understand the difference between the current scenario and what we were able to do uh, a few months or a few years ago with Dynamics. And at the end, yes, we're going to understand the first step to make to implement uh, the Omnichannel Engagement Hub uh, for a customer or for your own organization. So uh, the first thing to have in mind is uh, what is being Omnichannel. And this, this is uh, fully my um, my concepts or all the three key ideas, key concepts that I think uh, we we need to keep in mind when we try to think about being omnichannel. The first one is is quite obvious: is uh, that you need to be in many places. But the truth is that you don't need to be everywhere. So uh, being in the channels that you or your business and your customer expect you to be, and that makes sense. That's all you need to do. And and you don't have to go from zero to a hundred in in two months. So if you're starting with um, with a really basic uh, strategy uh, right now, with with only maybe telephone and, and and email, it's hard to jump from there to to all the channels. So uh, keep that in mind. The second one is uh, to bring a seamless experience between all the channels. And this is the key difference between multi-channel and omni-channel. Uh, we, we will talk uh, that about that in, in, in a slide. And the, the first thing is to really empower the agents. So there's no, uh, it, it makes no sense to have a lot of channels, but also a lot of platforms to handle uh, from the agent's perspective. So uh, that was, uh, and, and, and I'm, Sneaky, sneak peeking uh, the next slides, but that was the scenario until a few months or a few years ago. And right now we have a, a fully uh, platform that allows you to have a, a, a really omni-channel strategy. Uh, I, I remember, I, I thought, I think it was uh, 2016, uh, 2015, 16 when Microsoft launched uh, or buy uh, both actually uh, part two and social listening and so uh, all those platforms that came to life and already die uh, and we were all talking about omnichannel all the time but did we really were talking about omnichannel well if you follow these three concepts I, I don't think we were uh, so that's the, the, the key difference between multi-channel and omni-channel. Of course, both ideas share uh, the concept of being in multiple channels. Uh, there, there's no uh, threshold that you have to to break to be in, in being omni-channel, but there is a few things to, to consider. If you are multi-channel, it means that you have the, uh, disaggregated channels. It means that uh, Probably the, the, the teams that work with each channel won't uh, have uh, the full visibility of what the other persons are doing with the customers with information. 
and for that the the, the clear consequence is that you'll bring inconsistent experience for the customer and or the agent and th th these are three things that you then again you, you need to keep in mind if you want to check if you are being omnichannel or just multi-channel in the other hand if you are being omnichannel well you you have all the channels integrated into your business processes uh you will bring some uh, consolidated vision and handling of all communications uh regardless of the channel so it, it doesn't carry from a chat email or, or phone call uh the way that you handle all the communications, the, the, the places where you uh, see and, and manage all the information should be the same. And at the first point, it's, it's quite a text there. Uh, the idea that your customer can start the process through any channel, for example, uh, social media, then uh, they can continue it with uh, another channel and so on. So until they finish the, the process through any all the channel and the experience from the beginning to the end it's seamless that's the key concept for for omni channel so uh, what are the, the the main differences if we think about dynamics 365 customer service uh, just that that app and if we uh, compare it with the the omni channel engagement hub capabilities of course in both cases, we have all the SLA things, uh, entitlements, and so. Uh, but if, if we compare it in terms of, of uh, the channels and, and how to handle the, the customers, uh, it's really clear. For the customer service uh, app, we have traditional channels uh, as out-of-the-box channels. Uh, email, uh, telephone, of course, you have to create the, the call. Uh, if, if not, you, you need an integration. And then if you need to create new channels, for example, um, a soft phone to integrate with the, the CTI, uh, you have the channel integration framework and that, that works fine. And you may think, okay, just with that, we can create an omni-channel experience. And well, in, in, in a way, probably you might be, uh, be able to, to create that. The thing is, mm, on the Omnichannel Engagement Hub, we not only have those channels, but also we have many other new channels uh, out of the box, Facebook, Twitter, uh, WhatsApp, Line, WeChat, Teams, and also you can create custom channels with the channel integration framework in version 2. But then again, on the customer service app, you can handle one customer and one uh, window or tab of information per time. Uh, you, you cannot handle many conversations with many customers. And on, in, in Omnichannel Engagement Hub, you have this multi-session and multi-tab experience. So for the multi-session, you will be able to talk with different customers uh, through different channels. And in on, on each conversation, on each session, you will be able to handle different tabs of information. So you will be able to navigate through the customer's information without needing uh, to refresh the window, to, to go uh, outside the, the, the conversation and to lose the, the information on your screen. So this is a, a, a key differentiator between both. And then on the customer service side, you have classic written rules. And, and of course, the, the rest of the customer service app, it's also in, in the omnichannel. But then on the Omni Omnichannel Engagement Hub, we have the Asian scripts with macros if we need those. those. We have a skill-based routing. We have Asian status to define uh, which Asian is available and which not. So th there, there's a lot of things, not only the channels that are available on the Omnichannel Engagement Hub that make the difference. And again, this is something to remember because with the channel integration framework, Theoretically, we, we are able to create many channels uh, of our own on customer service, but that's not the only thing that the only channel, uh, Omni Channel Engagement Hub bring to us. So uh, as key uh, concept or, or of this solution, uh, we, we have started thinking in, in a customer experience center, not, not a contact center, because when we have uh, 
many channels and when we can design a customer journey for these channels and we can we control how we treat how we um, handle the conversations we are jumping into the experience that our customer is having with us of course in the middle of this is it is the case management uh, we won't uh, forget about that but uh, there are two of the three uh, major arguments that Microsoft uh, puts on the table when when they talk about proactive customer service or enabling always on service and, and so uh, uh, there are two things I, I, I think uh, there are the, the important things to discuss with our customers uh, and on, on these days with all the COVID situation uh, more than ever and uh, those are the agent uh, empowerment and the personalized service and why is that because when we uh, bring new tools to to our people to our agents to our employees we we are making them uh, more efficient and this is something that all the companies nowadays are looking for on the other hand uh, if we think about personalized service we are thinking about bringing better experiences to our customers we are thinking about uh, reducing uh, the term uh, KPI. So the, these are two ideas uh, that are really important um, today for, for the businesses because they want to be more efficient, they want to save cost, but they also want to uh, keep the, the customers with them. And of course, they want to uh, have more customers. So if they, if they can keep a personalized and, uh, uh, and a better service than th their competitors. It's it, it's something that the customers, everyone, you and I, all of us think about a company. So there are many, many capabilities that help us to create this customer experience center. Some of those are uh, only for, for the only channel engagement have, uh, but there, there are a few that, that are shared with you in customer service and, and the other only channel, of course, as, as I mentioned. Just to, uh, a few to highlight. Of course, the, the omnichannel experience is is the base of, of all this, but also the AI insights that we receive all the time that we, we are talking with the customer. Uh, we are able to analyze the sentiment of the conversation in, in real time. So if there's something wrong with customer, we will be able to know it and detect it uh, at a glance. So this is really important. The, the, the ability to have Asian scripts with macros and th this is our, uh, th these are short automations, but you're important um, for the people um, working on, on the line. And, and I, uh, I, I used to work uh, a lot of years ago uh, at a call center uh, and I had free systems that I have to log in to, to be able to work and no automation at all. And those things are nightmares. So it doesn't matter it's a, if it's a tiny thing that you automate for for um, an agent, but if you can help them to bring the right information to your screen with uh, by clicking just the bottom, this is something huge and something that uh, will make the agent um, be more happy with the show. And this is something uh, also something important for the companies today because the rotation is, is not good for, for any company and all the costs that makes uh, to make a, a, a new agent to learn how to work is, is something that all the companies today need to, to, to have in mind. So if we go and we start thinking about the, the customer's uh, perspective on, on this, try to imagine uh, that you have a problem with with uh, a company, uh, probably a telephone company or cable company are the two more hated companies on, on internet. So uh, we try to start a conversation through a channel of, of our choice, right? We we complain with the company on Twitter. This is uh, something we do on, on, on a daily basis. <laughs> well, we are, we're talking with someone. Uh, first, we start talking publicly, then they send us to uh, a DM and we start to, uh, talking privately. And at some point we might want to uh, talk literally with someone. So maybe we want to engage in a different channel and we don't want to explain everything from zero. 
So we are talking with the same company. They should be know in in, in they should know what what we just tell, uh, told to the 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 partner to to the other agent. So we call the contact center. And how many times happens that uh, the contact center doesn't know anything about what happens on Twitter? This is really common, or, or at least when I used to complain in Argentina, it was uh, <laughs> every time. So we have to think of that. We have to think that the customer will jump from one uh, channel to the other, and the information needs to be shared, uh, needs to be uh, accessible by every agent. It doesn't matter for which department or for which channel they work. So probably if I have a self-service channel, maybe I, I want to make some follow up of a promise or of a solution or something like that. And then the self-service portal that we, we have an excellent session before uh, come into place. So I, I can go into the self-service portal. I can check about the status of, of my case uh, and I also can uh, publish some feedback, some comments, and, and so being in, in, into a portal, maybe I want to uh, get more information, maybe I want to bring more insights about, about, the, pro about the problem, so maybe I need some assistance through uh, an installation virtual assistant, and there is where in the integration between virtual agent on the support uh, portal comes to, to play. And finally, I will end this conversation through any channel. I don't know. They gave me a solution. I go to the same uh, portal, the same self-service portal, and I, I close the, the case. Or maybe I receive an SMS and I answer the SMS and that uh, close the case. I don't care. I just close the conversation. This thing is it, it, it's already uh, closed for me. So in conclusion, I, I need to have a similar experience through all the channels. And I know I, I said it many times, and probably I will say it a, a few times uh, more, but I, I think this is uh, the key of talking about the omnichannel uh, engagement hub or any omnichannel solution. So that, that's great. For the customer, we have the, the perspective, but uh, as I mentioned on, on the title on, on, on before, we have to think about the, the, the Asian because there's no, uh, it, it doesn't make any sense to have all the channels connected to different applications and have a, a nation champion from one to the other, uh, trying to consolidate all the information in, in one screen. It doesn't make any sense. So a real omnichannel uh, strategy thinks both actors as uh, participants of an omnichannel experience, not only the customers. And of course, uh, as an agent, I, I want to receive all the communication, as I mentioned, in a unique platform. I don't want to uh, do Alt-Tab. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say Alt-Tab in English. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't want to do that. I, I want also to uh, receive just the amount of uh, customers that I can handle. And this is something with the capacity management that we can do. So if I only can handle free chat, at the same time, I want the system to be uh, smart enough, intelligent enough to uh, route me only free customers by, by chat. But if I have to receive a call, of course, I cannot receive free calls. So I need to receive only one. Those kind of uh, management uh, or the capacity of a nation, something that we can do with the only channel engagement hub. I will talk about it uh, a bit later. So then I want multi-session. If I can handle more than one customer, I want it to be easy for me. And I want to be able to navigate through all the information of my customer without jumping from one screen to another. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's the same, the same application. I don't want to uh, be refreshing the, 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 the tab all the time. If it's possible, of course, uh, an intelligent script with automated steps is something that uh, I would like to have. And this is what the Asian script brings uh, to, to life. And this is something that we also are going to talk about uh, in a few slides. Then, if I can 
control or if I can have many customers at the same time, I, I need to be able to control the ongoing conversations and the available conversations in case that I, I have to pick one. And if this conversation, if, for example, if a chat has a power bit relation as we saw in a previous uh, in, in a previous session today, I want this build relation to bring me some insights so the customer doesn't doesn't have to tell me everything again and if I can automate some steps of my uh, my conversation with the customer then it, it, it's it's better and finally I, I need a strong 300 degree view we we saw uh, on the previous on the first sessions uh, of this uh, of this uh, event uh, on this day, uh, how customer insight can help to bring more information uh, on the 360 degree view. And this is something important because not only the interactions that the customer make, or not only uh, the, the point, uh, touch points are handled by someone, some of them are, are automated, some of them are impersonated. So we need all this information to, to bring to the agent. And if we compare the situations that we have before and the situation, the scenario that we have right now, uh, I, I'll try to be really quick with the now situation because I already mentioned may, many of those. But before the omnichannel engagement hub, we we actually I think uh, and uh, I, I think we didn't have a real omnichannel experience. Maybe. We had it for the customer because with, uh, of course, we got with customer service, we have all the traditional channels. Then with social engagement, we uh, were able to bring all the social media, all this, the social activities into dynamics, but the integration was really limited. So in, in which sense, I, I don't know if everyone uh, was able to, to play or to implement social engagement. This is something I, I, I worked a lot on those days and you were able to uh, automate the integration of some social activities from social engagement to Dynamics 365, but you were you weren't able to interact from uh, Dynamics 365 with the customer through uh, a tweet. You 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 weren't able to reply a tweet or to reply a, a Facebook comment. So. For the agent, it, it wasn't really omnichannel. At least they have to to be uh, in two places: in social engagement and into the Dynamics 365. Then we didn't have a, a, a native uh, chat. We we have to use an I I I ISB sorry um, an ISB. Uh, and again, we only can handle one customer at, at a time. And finally, we, we have the, of course, the integration framework. It's not as old as social listening or social engagement, but, but we, we used to have it. Then if we compare it, it's really clear the, the differences. Then again, I'm not going to uh, shun back the, the same ideas that I already mentioned. But uh, the, there's one thing here I, I didn't mention before, and is that I have the possibility to treat cases and other activities uh, at the same way I treat the chat. So. If I want to distribute uh, the cases, if I want to distribute maybe uh, campaign activities the same way with the same priorities and the same capability, or, sorry, capacity management, I will be able to do it with the Omnichannel Engagement Hub. Uh, and this is something really interesting uh, to, to dig into. So the current scenario is something like this. You have your customer on, on one side with a, a, a with uh, all the channels available to interact with us, all the channels goes to uh, the Omnichannel Engagement Hub. Of course, the Omnichannel Engagement Hub is connected with customer service and customer service uh, can uh, be connected with sales, marketing, customer service inside, uh, customer insight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the agent only have one application to work with, and this is the real omni-channel experience. Any other uh, scenario, if the customer 
weren't able to to communicate with many um, many channels or if the agent um, had to be logged into many places um, it's not truly omnichannel for for both sides so what should we uh, have to keep in mind to start working with uh, the omnichannel engagement hub well the first thing uh, as a company of course not as a as partner that, that implement the omnichannel for the companies but as a company you need to be uh, really clear on your strategy so i i mentioned some something before if you only have two channels if you have traditional channels and, and you want to bring new channels into your strategy that's okay but don't try to go from zero to a hundred uh, in two months this is something that will change the way you work it will change the way your agents work it will change the way the the supervisors uh work so try to define the omni channel strategy first and then jump to the, the platform the second is of course get the right licenses uh, all the agents and supervisors that need to get into the omnichannel engagement hub needs at least two licenses. The first one, always the customer service enterprise license. Uh, the second one can be the Dynamics 365 chat add-on or the Dynamics 365 digital messaging add-on. The difference between one and the other is uh, which channels will be available for the omnichannel uh, engagement hub or for, for, the, for the agents. And I, I mentioned at least these two licenses because for the supervisor, there is a, a Power BI uh, out of the box report that they can, uh, sorry, dashboard that they can uh, use, but they will need, of course, the Power BI license. So it's, it's not mandatory, it's not something that it's required, uh, to implement the omni channel, it's only if they are going to use this uh, this dashboard. Then, the configuration of the of the environment. This is something that is not hard. It's actually a, a really simple wizard, but you need to take uh, in consideration two things. The first one, it takes time. It's not something uh, quick. It's not something that you go to next 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 and in 15 minutes you have the environment uh configure it's something that will last a few hours and in some times uh you will have to go back uh, roll roll back and try again because it can have uh, an installation error uh it used to happen more before uh, on the last uh after the last uh release of April, I didn't have a, a problem with that, but before April, I, I have a few a few issues on, on, on that. And after we have all this, you need to configure the application. And this is not a, a, an easy application. There are a lot of things to consider. You have your, your users. The users have, of course, the, the capacity. They have the default status. Then you can add skills to the equation you have to configure the the work streams and we will we'll talk about the work streams uh, in a few moments you have to configure all the queues all the channels the agent scripts the macros uh, all the notification and, and session uh, templates and of course out of the box there are a few things already done but if you want to uh, bring your own strategy to life well there, there are a few things there to 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 keep in mind and this goes not only for the customers that will or for the organization that will implement it but also for the partners that will implement it because we as partners need to uh estimate the, the effort and well there there are a few tasks there to to keep in mind so how how does it look when when a customer contact with us and we have the only channel engagement hub uh, the first thing of course the customer has a problem they will choose a channel or and in this case it's going to be a chat this conversation will enter uh, into uh, 
dynamics into the omnichannel and it will be connected to a work stream. This work stream will define how this conversation will be distributed and there are two ways we are going to talk about them uh, in the next slide. Uh, one is push and the other is, is peak actually. Uh, and it also defines the, the capacity and, and we want to talk about capacity also in a few slides. Then it's going to be uh, categorized and, and it's going to, to go to, to the right queue. And finally, it's going to uh, be distributed to the right agent. This means that this agent has the capacity, the skills, the knowledge. So the routing rules here are quite uh, quite a thing. And of course, we, we can do the simplest uh, implementation. All the communication goes to the queue and we have all the uh, agents on the same queue and we have no problem at all. Uh, but then for bigger organizations, we will have uh, larger or, or co more complicated scenarios. And again, both for the, the organization and for the partner, this is important uh, when they try, are trying to define the scope of, of a project because this is a, a, a complex application again. I don't want to, to say it's a bad application, not at all. It's a great application, but it's something that you need to know. It's it's complex if you need it to be complex, but it's easy if you want to, it to be easy. Uh, well, the work stream. Uh, uh, for me, this is the key of, of everything. Of course, you'd find uh, all the information that you need to be able to route these conversations here, which channels will be applied, uh, the routing rules, the capacity, and I, I don't want to speak uh, what capacity means, but uh, I'm mentioning a lot. So, well, capacity, what, what is capacity? The capacity for a work stream is the weight of a, a conversation. So uh, each agent has uh, a few, and I, I'm going to jump Fast forward a little bit to this uh, other slide. Give me just one second here. So uh, each user has a capacity units. We determined at, at at the user uh, form, and in this case, is a hundred. Uh, then the work stream also has a capacity, and what it means is that you will need at least thirty uh, capacity units free available to have a new, in this case, chat conversation. If you don't have 30, you won't be able to handle a, a new chat. So going to the simpler, uh, simplest example, if I only have the chat as the, the unique channel, then I will be able to handle only three conversations with this configuration because each chat conversation will uh, fill 30 boxes of my capacity unit. And then it's going to be 30, 60, 90, and I won't be able to handle a fourth chat conversation. And we're going to see what it means into the platform in a few seconds. Going back to this uh, slide, then on each for, uh, work stream, we can configure the quick replies and of course, the, the session and notification templates. So how do you want the session looks like to a customer that comes from this channel? Okay, it's not only channel as a chat, every chat conversation, no, it's for chat, but through this work uh, stream. So th this is important again, this can be as complex as you want or as simple as you want. Uh, what I mentioned before, the two work distribution modes. Uh, I have here the, this video shows the um, push. Uh, you receive an, a pop-up notification. It can be on Dynamics or also on uh, your desktop. And then you can reject or you can accept uh, depending on, on the configuration. And the other one is peak. And we're going to see it into uh, Dynamics in a few seconds in a few moments. 
and you just have a, a stream uh, there and you pick the conversation that you want to, to handle. Uh, and the notifications, you, you can configure all the experience. So you, you can configure how the notification look, not everything, of course. Uh, <laughs> this is a model driven app, it's not a, a, a Canvas app. So <laughs> you can configure the timeout of a notification. You can configure if uh, the, the label of the accept button and if you want it to be with a reject button or not. And then you, you can configure if you want it to have a desktop notification in case that uh, the only channel engagement, engagement have it's on, on uh, it, it's not in, in front of the it's not the main window open. Then the information on the notification also you can bring some uh, notification fields into this pop up as you uh, prefer. So the capacities we already talked about it. And then the Asian script, uh, it's it's really simple. It's really simple. It's not a big deal, but you can configure uh, different uh, scripts and you can allow uh, the Asian to select different uh, the script that they want to, to use or you can automate it. Then you have three kind of steps, uh, text instructions, you, you have to greet the customer and when you complete it, you just click on the blue button. You can uh, introduce some macros. There are some logic into the into the script. Uh, the way I, that you configure it is really uh, like uh, Power Automate. And the third one is you can change the you can route the script to to another uh, to another script. So. I'm going to use a few moments into the platform to refresh some of the things that, that I will, were mentioned before. Uh, I'm going to unshare the screen and share again. Please let me know when you can see. Um, this is screen one, yes. Let me know if you can see the screen now. I'm going to take this as a yes. Okay, well, uh, here we have the, the first thing you see as an agent when you log. Yes, thank you there. <laughs> uh, when you log into the Omnichannel Engagement Hub, Actually, there are two uh, applications that are installed when, when you configure it. The first one is the Omnichannel for Customer Service. The other one is uh, for the administrators. And this is the Omnichannel Asian Dashboard. There are three things that we see here. The first one are the, the work items that are active in, in some, some way. We have the, the first one is actually active. We have a, a Sean Smith person here waiting for me to answer and I'm going to come here again just in one second and the other one is in wrap up status it means that the conversation is is already done it's closed but I, I'm doing some after call uh, kind of work so I only mm, can post some internal uh, messages but this still counts as a conversation that I have open so this is the first stream. The second one only makes sense if you have a peak mode, a distribution mode in, 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 a, in a work stream. So if you don't have uh, as, uh, any work stream with a peak distribution mode, this is going to be empty always. And how do we see here the, 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 the way that, that appears? So I'm here on the uh, Subservice portal. I'm going to copy the case number. I'm going to open the chat. It asked me about the case number. It's not uh, mandatory, so I could go with submit without putting it. But for for this example, I, I will use it. So it tells me that some agent's going to be here in a moment. And if I refresh this uh, screen, now I have here this uh, conversation. Uh, 
available for me to to pick uh, this chat. So I can see here the channel. I can see here uh, the queue. So there are a lot of information that I can that I can see, and then I can assign it to me with just two clicks. Okay, and the first stream are all the closed work items that I I closed in the in the last day. So why did I put the the case number? Because on this chat, I introduced the case number as a pre-chat uh, survey, and because it's on um, on the portal, and I'm already logged, and I introduced the, the case number, it finds me the customer and the case. Uh, so when I open the this conversation, I have all the information that I need to uh, help this customer. So really quick, what do I, do I have? Uh, the, the quick information, the the, the uh, card of the case, the card of, of the contact, and I have the the recent cases. If there were any other uh, previous uh, chat service uh, questions, I, I, I will see it here. Uh, of course, the waiting time, some some information, and some visitor information, and then I have a timeline. But here I can change it from the contact to the case. So I can have on the same screen all the information that I need to help this customer to know what happened with this customer, regardless the um, the uh, channel of any previous activity or communication. So uh, this is something that, that keep in mind, this is really cool. I, I would like to have it on, on other <laughs> entities also. Uh, so we can close here and we have a full screen. Of course, we can close this navigation uh, bar and we can have the, the full screen. If uh, I I were configure the, 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 the script, it, it would appear here on, on the right screen. It, I don't have it right now. And then when, when you mention the tabs, these are the tabs that you can configure as part of the session experience. OK, and this is something uh, that we can change from uh, work stream to work stream. OK, one more thing be before jumping to, to the administration um, app. Here we have uh, the, the Asian dashboard, but we also have, uh, well, actually, it's on the other tab, <laughs> the ongoing conversation dashboard. It tells me for each uh, Asian, or actually, for each conversation, who the customer is, if it's identified, because not all the, the conversation are going to be identified. Uh, sometimes it's going to be visitor and it's anonymous until the the, the agent uh, is able to, to identify the customer. Of course, uh, the chat subject, the queue, the channel, uh, the state of this uh, conversation, the sentiment, not always we're going to have sentiment because if there's no conversation, like this example, I opened the chat and I didn't put anything, it's going to be nothing. Uh, well, and then the, the work stream that is uh, this conversation were created from. OK. So uh, jumping really quickly to have some minutes in case it, either there are questions. One thing I mentioned, and I think it's important, the activity entities. We can create work stream for the activity entities, but it's not for every entity. We have, of course, the cases and uh, we have the campaign activities. These are for me, at, at least two of the uh, measure entities. Then for uh, the people that has uh, field service, there are a few entities from field service that make sense, but uh, as a, a regular uh, or classic implementation, Campaign activities is something that never had uh, much sense for for marketing use because it, it's only distributed and so. But in this case, you can take these activities and put it to a distribution mode. So when a, a nation is available, it starts doing some of these uh, calls, uh, outgoing calls. Uh, from a, a campaign. So this is something to to look into if you are uh, using the, this model. Then we have the, the chat 
and I'm going to be really uh, brave here with uh, what I wanted to do. I have two uh, chats. This is the big chat, is the one that uh, I use to configure the, the big work stream. And then we have the new chat. This is the, uh, the first one I, I created on the own, here on, on the environment. It's with the default uh, work stream and I cannot change it. So this is something also to keep in mind. If you configure a, a, a channel with the work stream, it's, it's, it, it's something that you can change. So I'm going to change this uh, snippet. I'm going to change the, the um, chat on the portal and how hard can it be? Well, it's really simple. Uh, for me, that I, I, I was a functional, I am a functional consultant, uh, so th that, that's my technical background. I only have to go here to chat. I'm going to be here as well, and I'm going to change it here. And this is the only things I, I need to do. Probably I, I will need to uh, clear the cache on, on the portal. But, but that, that, that's all. So I just save and close. And if I don't have to clear the cache, but probably I, I will have to. If I do some F5, if everything goes well, it, no, this is still blue, so it didn't change. So I, I need to clear the cache and, and it's already done. It, that's the only thing I need to do. So it, it's really easy, really quick. If you need to change something on 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 that way, so what else do we have here? And I, I think it's important to uh, to see what I mentioned before. For the for each work stream, you have the uh, session experience, and those are templates. So in this case, I have the tabs that I want to to have. The anchor tab is the customer three sixty. Uh, 360, uh, and this is something from the Omni channel. It's the one that shows me both the customer and the case. And then I have the knowledge base search, but I can add as many other tabs as I want, and I can uh, personalize the experience for different uh, channels. The same happens to uh, the tabs. Uh, here is where I can create the tabs. And the same happens to, to the notifications, uh, as I show before. There, there are few notifications or, or type of notifications for, for a work stream, and I can change it from here. So if I want, uh, if I don't want to be able to reject a, a chat that is assigned, I just change this. Is if I want it to, to be shown uh, the desktop notification, I just change it if I want to uh, increment the time out uh, for the, the notification. I also, it's really easy to, to change. And this is all the, the, the parameterization that you can do. Uh, then again, to personalize the uh, experience here on, on the Omnichannel uh, Engagement Hub. So as I mentioned before, this was, wasn't going to be a, a technical session. This is a, a quick jump to, to to, uh, through a few things on, on the on the app, uh, the last thing it's about the uh, the work stream that, that I want to show um, to recap all the things I, I mentioned. So I have the capacity that each conversation that comes from here uh, will need to, to be able to be assigned. All the uh, allowed presences. So I, I didn't show that, but I, here I have my presence. It's I'm on BC, but I can put them available. Uh, so I can put it here as many uh, presences that uh, I want to, to be assigned. So if it's a way I want it to be assigned as well, it doesn't make any sense, but well, you can create other presences. So that makes sense. Here are the routine rules. Uh, this, of course, is uh, on all the, the conversations but you can change it and you can add conditions based on the chat, based on the case, uh, based on the customer. So it's it's really easy to, to do. 
But then again, it's it's not only uh, about the, the customer. Also, it's the context of on the of the conversation on of or some variables that you add on the work stream. So uh, to finish on on, on time, uh, what I recommend to begin, I, it's really uh, simple. I mentioned before. Well, the first you can create a demo environment. It's not. Uh, Trivial is not something that you do in two seconds. You need the customer service, then you need to add the digital message add-on trial. There, there are three add-ons there that you can choose. You have to choose the one that says trial. Then, uh, of course, analyze your customer service strategy, get trained. There are a lot of information out there. Uh, you have the learn portal. And if you need, you, you just reach the specialist to get the, get the right help. Uh, my contact information in case you, you, you want to to connect. Uh, my blog is in Spanish and it's not always updated, but my Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, my personal and uh, professional email, all the things that you can uh, scan. And that's that's basically all. I, I, I want to finish in time in case there's I, I, there is a, a, a question. Yes. So, um, yes, we have a question. Yes, Alex. Uh, yes, Alex. Uh, the, the what it, what I show about the the, the entity uh, is about that. You, you can create a work stream for the case uh, entity and make it go through all the distribution process uh, and capabilities that the omnichannel have. Uh, the Power Bit relation you assign to to the channel, actually. So, yeah, so we're talking. So we have another question uh, from. Yes, so, yes. The, the, if the there are routing rules uh, like PBA, uh, the the Power Bit relation is something that you configure to you deploy it to the channel. Uh, so it it goes through the PBA first. And if it's needed, then it goes to to the agent. That's great. So, I, if there is any other uh, question, um, I can't see any question. Um... If, if, if not, uh, uh, maybe everyone wants a five minutes recess before Sarah. Uh, came as a. It, 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 it's up to you, of course. Absolutely, just, yeah, it's, it's a I, good. I, I, I should say thanks uh, for everyone for being here again. Uh, I hope my Russian English wasn't as bad uh, uh, as I think, <laughs> and I hope you you enjoy yeah. the presentation. Yeah, no, absolutely great, and uh, everyone appreciating about this presentation. Um, you have pulled it off really nicely within the time and really informative session to be honest Nicholas to be honest like you know all the future sessions I'm looking forward to it as well so I do share your um, contact information in the chat window so people can be in touch with of you course. and uh, if they have any more further questions um, they can ask you excellent thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you. So we have a next session coming up from Sarah, and it's about the create useful and memorable customer experiences using Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform. Uh, we got two minutes in between, so as uh, Nicholas mentioned, so we got two minutes break, and uh, in between, um, can I ask Sarah, do you want to try your screen sharing? And yeah, we can absolutely. check the audio as well.